Hi class, this is Bill Berry with a video on getting started with JavaScript. This is our third week of the introductory programming course with JavaScript. We're going to start with a quick look of about what we know now and then what we're going to cover in the coming week and then we'll dive into some material. First of all, what do we know at this point? We do know enough to create a simple HTML file with the tags necessary to support JavaScript code. It's a basic script, but we know how to get it going and what tags to use. We also know how to write simple scripts, so we can do some simple things with JavaScript so far. We know how to write data to a web page, so we can use document.write if we want to send things to a page. We also know how to interact with some basic heading tags, so we can make it a little prettier, as we've seen. We also know how to write data to the developer console, so we can use console.log if we want to write something to that. Also keep in mind, while we haven't gotten too deep, the developer console is a very useful thing to have open while we're running our JavaScript because sometimes we'll see some error messages there that we would otherwise miss. So while we're running JavaScript, it's a good idea to have that. That's going to be available on your developer tools. It's F12 on Windows that brings that up on most browsers, but you can certainly look at your browser menu and find that. Anyway, we can also get user input using the prompt function. It ain't fancy and it's kind of hacky. We don't like it a lot, but it's something that's useful. You can send a message to the user and you can supply a default for if they just press enter. We also know how to use numeric and string literals to make simple expressions and use simple operators. So we know how to do some math, we know how to do concatenation with strings, etc. We also know how to use a few basic functions like the ones listed here, document.write, log, prompt. We've also looked at a couple like math.floor and math.seal, as in sealing. And so we know a few basic functions that kind of help us out, so we've got a little bit of the flavor. That's what we know at this point, but our world is pretty limited and we need to start opening up more avenues to write more functional scripts, more interesting scripts, and that's what we're going to start doing this week. So next, what's coming this week? Well, I want to start with make sure, making sure that you have a good workflow when you work with JavaScript. I know in the class I see people opening and closing windows all the time and, and you're just you know sort of uh, fluttering around more than necessary. You're doing more work. So I want to show you a simple workflow of how to make that easy and time efficient. We're also along the way going to look at two algorithm design tools, flowcharts and pseudocode. These are two popular ways to take uh, ideas and turn them into step-by-step -step instructions. Then we're going to get into something that we have long needed. Uh, we have been writing long lines because we've had to consume information that we got from the user at that very moment. We have had no way to store that stuff. So variables are going to open a door for us that is a, a very important one and an important concept in all programming. We're also going to look at internal documentation. How do you make your code most readable? We've already talked about indentation as part of that, but we also want to look at variable and function names to make sure that those are clear, and also talk about code commenting. Uh, we'll later then get into pop-ups. How do you tell the user something, not ask them a question necessarily, but just tell them something that you need to tell them. Again, a little bit hacky. Uh, then we're going to get into something a little bit nicer in terms of user input, and that is forms. How do we create HTML forms? Then how do we operate on those with JavaScript? Then life starts to get more interesting, and certainly our code, uh, yeah, can, can certainly approach a lot more problems. So that's, what's we're, that's what we're going to talk about this week. First thing though, let's look at the JavaScript workflow. The basic two tools that are often used when dis, uh, discussing how to write an algorithm are flowcharts and pseudocode. Flowcharts are a visual way to represent a problem, and you'll see these outside the realm of programming. They are just generally useful things in the world. So they create a visual representation, but they are a little harder to create. You have to Want, you know, you'll probably want a tool. You can draw them by hand, certainly, but you'll probably want a tool if you want to make it look at pro look at professional. You can look at the tool that's here. There's a free tool called Gliffy, G-L-I-F-F-Y, and it will let you create nice flowcharts, and you can save those things even. So that's a, a nice tool if you're just doing simple ones. That's fine, and it's a, a free tool as long as you're doing simple things. So the other option is pseudocode, and pseudocode lets us write English-like text but organize it like a program. 
You can create it in any editor. You can use Notepad, Notepad++. You can write it in your program editor, however you want to do it. One nice thing about pseudocode is that nothing is lost because if you'd like, you can take that pseudocode and put it into your actual program editor and turn those pseudocode lines into comments. And then you can write the code that does the thing underneath each one. So uh, I think that's a, a really useful thing and it makes pseudocode easy because it's easy to create and you don't feel like you lose anything. So that's good. Let's look at two examples. Over on the left, you see a sample flowchart describing the workflow that I'm going to show you. You see that the flowchart has different shapes, and each shape represents some specific thing. Notice that this capsule type shape at the top and at the bottom represents start and end. So we start here and we end over here. If you see rectangular square shaped boxes, those represent steps, calculations, uh, things that you are accomplishing. And if you see diamond-shaped things, that represents a decision that needs to be made. So in this case, whether the program is working well, whether we're satisfied with it. So let's read from the top. We start the process. We open our text editor. We type in some JavaScript or edit the JavaScript that's sitting there. We save that as an HTML file, most of the time just Control s And then you open or refresh it in the browser and test it to see if it works as you wish. Now, if it's all working well, if everything's perfect, yes, if so, you're done. But if not, if it's not working to your satisfaction, we take the no branch here and come back and we continue to edit, save, refresh, test, etc. And we go in a circle until we have accomplished everything we set out to do. Once it's all done, then it's done and we can submit the work. So that's a flowchart to represent that workflow. Here is some pseudocode to represent it over on the right. We open our text editor, then we repeat a certain number of steps until it's working well. Now notice we indent, in this case I've indented to show that all of that is part of this repeat process. So until it's working well, we continue to type and edit, save as HTML, open or refresh it and test it, and we keep going in the circle until it's working well, and once it is, then we drop out of that process and we submit the work in Canvas because we're done. So pseudocode works, flowchart works, use whichever one you want. Now, in some classes they'll tell you write pseudocode for everything, write flowcharts for everything, but in truth many of our programs are so simple that students won't write these things and that's probably okay. But I promise you, you will get to problems that are hard enough someday, somehow, certainly if you go on to other programming classes that are more demanding, you will hit a wall at some point in which you have to take a step back and say, okay, I've got to take some time to think this out. As I've said in class, programming is more about thinking than it is about typing. So always having a plan, knowing what you're doing, doing the thinking part first before you start typing will save you time on the typing and testing part, I promise. Uh, but uh, that's lost on most students for now, so <laughs> let's just move on. Let me now show you that workflow that I'm going to, uh, that I've been talking about. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, let's say I'm going to start with my starter HTML. That starter file is just a super simple, a super simple uh, file here. Let me zoom in just a little so you can see it. That just has the basic stuff set up that I can write my script, right? So I just want to always have one of those things available. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy it. I can just do Control V, Control C. I'm going to get a copy of that. I'll put it here. And then I'm going to just call it Simple Script to show you. Okay, so I have created my simple script. Now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to open it in Notepad and then I'm also going to double click it and open it in my browser. Alright, so I'm going to allow that content and you'll see there that I now have Hello World. Now, in this case, I'm going to uh, just minimize, actually I'm going to not minimize it, I'm going to move this over to the right and then I'm going to put my notepad script here. Now notice everything that I do now I can do with these two windows and I don't have to go anywhere else. So for instance if I want to do some little modifications document.write in this case maybe I'm going to put a heading one tag and then I'm going to copy and paste that and I'm going to put my close heading one tag. Now once I've done with that I'm going to save and then all I have to do is to come over here and refresh so I can just do refresh here and see my results. 
Now, as I said, it's not a bad idea to press F12, bring up the developer tools, and go to the console. So if I see anything interesting pop out here, if I have a mistake, maybe that's going to give me a little bit of information. So I would get used to having that, even if you make it kind of small and get it out of the way, I'd get used to having that. So if I want to do anything else, I can certainly come back here and edit some more. I don't like heading 1. It seems too big. I'm going to make it heading 2, and I'm going to save and then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to press F5 or refresh. All right? Now down here it's just saying, hey, navigation occurred, uh, you know, it, it basically caused the starting of a new page. That's okay, that's, that's not a big deal. All right? So that's a good workflow to work on your scripts, is type in one window, run in another, but there's no need to go out of that. You don't need to close the browser or anything else, right? For the most part, you can work in this environment and you have things uh, under your control very nicely. So those are the, that's the basic workflow that I want you to get used to. And you can see that everything's working fine uh, and you, you can uh, you know, continue to test until you're ready with your code. So hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to go on in a minute to uh, 